Mickman with Mickman Brothers, and today we are going to talk about ash trees. There was just another finding of emerald ash borer within Minnesota, so we thought, you know, let's identify some ash trees. What to, what do we look for for emerald ash borer damage? And what are the signs, and what can you do about it? So first of all, I'm standing in front of a huge, beautiful ash. Um, this was planted quite a while ago. It's a, it's a mature tree. Um, and as you can see, the leaves, they look like this. They're kind of glossy. Um, they're a little bit serrated on the edges. They have a really nice tip. Um, they're compound, which means that they have these different leaflets on there. Leaves, leaflets. And then the buds is really how you can tell. So a lot of times we call them chocolate chip buds because they're brown and they're huge and they're kind of fuzzy as well. So the way that ashes grow is that they're an opposite leaf structure. But so then there's a bud at each base of each leaf. Then at the tip, there's, a, there's three buds. So see how they're kind of pointy. They look kind of like chocolate chips. Um, you can't miss them. If you, even during the winter, if you want to know if it's an ash tree, look at the buds. You'll be able to know it's an ash tree. So now emerald ash borer. That is an invasive pest that we do not like very much. Um, and they, the deal with emerald ash borers is they, they don't just feed on unhealthy trees or anything like that. They feed on every single ash tree, whether it's little, big, black ash, green ash, white ash, anything. Um, they just like to feed in there. So what they do is they enter within the stem of the tree and they feed between the bark and the cambium tissue. So they, they feed in between that cambium tissue and, it's, and it screws up the tree's functions for moving water and nutrients up and down. So their little larval galleries, so they lay eggs in there and then the larvae start to feed. And see on this little piece of wood that the larvae start down here while they're small. And then this is called the larval gallery. And they just feed back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then this is the damage that interrupts all of that water flow and nutrient flow within the trees. And this is characteristic of an emerald ash borer. It has a, it's a flat headed borer which means um, when the beetles actually mature and it leaves from the tree, its exit hole is D-shaped. It is actually really hard. I think it's hard to tell sometimes, but it's just tiny D. One side's flat, one side's round. And that's what a flat-headed borer exit hole looks like. So what do we do? Um, you can, if you have a really nice ash tree within your yard, you can save it for sure. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. There's soil drenches, which um, is just an application of a systemic insecticide to get sucked up through the tree. Um, you apply it at the ground, sucks up. Um, you can inject the tree. Uh, there's a couple you know, different ways to do that. So there are ways to do it. Um, it's an ongoing process. You have to protect the tree from, you know, from here on out if you want to save it. Um, emerald ash borer is, you know, it's spreading. We don't know for sure everywhere that it is. Um, to be on the safe side, if you want to protect your tree, go for it. Um, you know, you can wait until it comes closer to you. It's, it's really up to you um, and just what you want to do with your tree. Um, I definitely say if it's nice, invest in it because you're not going to be able to plant another tree and see it reach maturity more than likely. So even if I planted a tree today, I don't know if I'd see it when it's, you know, 30, 40 years old. So um, if you can protect those ash trees and then keep your eyes out. Uh, emerald ash borer damage is just looks, um, there's defoliation up at the top, a little bit of tip dye back, um, clustering of leaves, that kind of a thing. Um, and it does take a couple years of the ash borer to feed within the tree to see the damage it causes. So that's another tricky thing about emerald ash borer. Um, don't move your firewood. Uh, call your city forester if you suspect any sort of, you know, beetle activity or if your ash tree doesn't look very healthy. Um, we just need to try to try to track down the beetles and try to quarantine them as much as possible to stop the spread. So that's pretty much about it. If you have any questions, uh, visit us at www.mickman.com or on Facebook. And also Google Emerald Ash Borer. The National Forest Service has a bunch of information. DNR has a lot of information. There's a lot of information out there. So do that. Give us a call. Have a good day. Protect your ash trees. Thanks. <laughs> Bye.